I want to do some of these harder hikes and I just, it's really hard to coordinate with other people. going to go to Madera Canyon which this ends up in we're gonna cut off there's a dirt road that leads towards Sonoida well so much for my clean truck I just washed it last night I've wanted to head up to Florida Saddle for years I've asked all kinds of friends and it's been so hard to coordinate nobody really has been able to come along with me I've only been up there once and it's truly awesome. It's very difficult to get to Hi. though. It takes a fairly decent level of fitness to reach that point. So I just said the heck with it and I headed off too late and ill prepared for this hike, but it was still awesome. Where the road ends is typically where the adventure begins for me. My name is Matthew, and this is Exploring God's Country. Getting started out here, it's a little bit late to be doing this, but, um, you know, the weather isn't as bad as it says it is. I think it's probably in the 80s, so it would be in the mid-90s, and um, we'll see how far we make it on this trail. I'm in really bad shape, so... This is a difficult trail in that it's steep and long. There is a center for the University of Arizona over here. They have a bunch of buildings because this slope of the Santa Rita's is an experimental range. The first section of this hike is pretty straightforward. I'd say the first half mile, three quarters of a mile, is just coming up the side of the drainage alongside the University of Arizona Research Center there at the bottom of the canyon. It's been a long time since I've hiked on a trail, so this feels pretty good. So I'm not even that far in, and we have sign of trafficking activity here. It's kind of surprising to me because this canyon is very popular with birders and it's pretty well traveled. So the trail here has started to climb. It's my last respite because it does this for, I don't know, almost four miles. And I've only been to the top of this one time before, that was many years ago. Friend Peter and I went from Florida Canyon to Madera Canyon. Oh, there is a perfect little breeze here. Feels absolutely amazing. This is very interesting. The plant behind me has sprouted pods and they're on the ground as well. They almost look like cucumbers. And I'll have to look this up, but I wonder if you can eat them. There's a lot of stuff out here that you can actually eat. Right through here, it's really nice and cool. And uh, there's a little bit of humidity. I haven't seen running water yet. I thought I heard it, but I just really like this area. So the first time I came up here was with, with James and Paul. And Paul will remember very well how I was gagging horrifically. I almost throw up. Uh, we believe the cartel used the horse to pack drugs over the mountains. It died. We came upon it and it was the most horrific, disgusting smell I've ever smelled in my life. So right here, the trail makes a turn and it heads over to the other shoulder. I believe if I followed this up, it should lead to Florida Mine, if I remember the map correctly. But it appears They've blocked it off there and shot us up this way. Right behind me here is a catchment to grab water from the spring. This is great news because I hear water in there right now. If I run out of water, I can come back and fill up right there. Well, I'm getting my first glimpse of the upper 
ridge of the Santa Rita Mountains here. And we're headed back there somewhere. Oh, I need to take a break. I need to get some water. I love those little electrolyte packets. However, if I made one, I would put more sugar in it. It doesn't seem like there's ever enough sugar in it. Or they got artif worse yet, they have artificial sweeteners. Time so before when I tried this, I made it a little bit farther than where I'm at now. I just ran out of water, so I had to come back down. Right up behind me, you can see the Florida saddle. This just looks amazing here. I can never get over how awesome this canyon looks below me. Here's another little piece of sign I just picked up of uh, traffickers. This is a piña, a pineapple flavor drink that you put in your water. Uh, it's all in Spanish. They're kind enough to leave that here on the side of the trail for me to pick up. Just, just spectacular up here. Probably I've already said that, but there's a small meadow and it's in the shadow of these big peaks all around. Many of them I want to uh, bag, but I just have to develop the, the uh, fitness level to come up here more often. I'm really pushing myself now. We got a big old pile of bear poo right there, right, right below my foot. Gotta check at what elevation we're at. 6516. I got about a thousand three hundred feet to the saddle. So I made a major mistake. I didn't think about it until a little after I had my drink of water back there. I needed to chug water before I went on the hike and then have my bottles full. I love doing this. I wish there was some way I could make money doing this and the videos. But I don't know how right now. Super awesome in Arizona. I think, uh, well, it's certainly over a majority of the land is public. It's either state or federal. And you can come out and do this sort of thing. It doesn't cost you anything besides the permits and your gas. Got a little over a mile left to the saddle, and then the saddle is a junction to the peak. Um, <laughs> but I still have to make up that whole 1300 feet. In terms of effort, there's a great deal left, and I'm really concerned about running out of water. This meadow is at about 7,000 feet, and it's just a completely different world. The environment totally changes from a desert environment to a nice, lush, beautiful meadow. It's incredible. It's one of the most amazing spots I've found in the Santa Ritas. This meadow is awesome. I stopped here for quite a while. I ate uh, the next half mile though, is gonna climb a thousand feet. Oh Lord, um, a half mile isn't even that far. I'm just gonna go very slow. Again, to try and conserve water, I really shot myself in the foot when I drank that uh, coffee this morning and didn't drink water. So these are called Sky Islands and for good reason. Right here, I am in a completely different uh, geology than anywhere else or uh, climate, maybe the word. This would be an awesome place to come back in with a hammock in camp. We even have running water down in the creek right now. Yeah, I can't get enough of this meadow up here. This is so beautiful. It's like a high alpine meadow. And uh, I'm just very slowly making my way up it, the thousand feet to the saddle. But it is incredibly enjoyable.
very, very comfortable. I bet you it's not even 70 degrees up here and it's awesome. Worth every step so far. There's pipes all over the place in the mountains and uh, I think it's kind of like a reverse well. <laughs> they catch water high up on the mountain and then take it back down somewhere lower for, uh, for their water supply. Well, I can tell that virtually nobody's coming up here. The trail is well overgrown. I had to search for it a little while back there. This is just like a fairy tale up here. It is incredible. This may be one of my new favorite trails. Oh boy, these trees are huge up here. It's, like I said, this is just almost like straight out of a fairy tale. It was around here that I started to seriously question my life decisions. This trail gets very steep towards the end and it's very taxing to get up. I had aspirations of also visiting Florida Peak, but those went by the wayside on this slope here. I've been checking this more than I should. I only have about 200 feet left to go up. Woohoo! And then we'll be on the saddle. So that, I believe, is Florida Peak right behind me. It's very close. I don't know how many uh, more feet I have to go up to get to it. I may have to call it quits because I'm running out of time. I'm running out of water. The sun's going to set in about two and a half, three hours, and I need to get back to my truck. Oh, I'm not going to make Florida Peak today. <laughs> no way. I'm lucky if I'll make this saddle. I'm about an eighth of a mile away from the saddle and 220 feet below it. Uh, this is a heck of a hike. Um, I really need to get in better shape. The traffickers were nice enough to leave me a little bit more garbage up here to pick up. It's just below the saddle. They bought it at Walmart in Mexico. It's all in Spanish. Well, I scared something big up. I think that may have been a bear. It was a lot bigger than a, a deer. Let me go back and investigate here real quick. <whistles> here, bear, 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 hello. Well, I'm hoping he went down farther than the trail and he isn't above it. Just gonna have to be really careful and be loud when I come down. I can literally see the saddle. I'm just a football field away. Whoa, my lungs are burning and I'm probably going to be walking down in the dark. Take a short rest here and then I got to book it down because I got about two hours of daylight left. There's a second sign just a little ways to the south here. I'm going to go take a look at what that says. Well, there's actually two signs here. There's a fork in the trail this way. Um, and then you can go that way as well. Just about out of water. Uh, I'm gonna, I got ha about half left. I'm gonna take about a third of what I got left and have a sugary electrolyte drink. Thoughts raced through my head up here about all the exploring I could do. I've only been to this spot one time before and I didn't realize it was so close to these high alpine meadows and 
peaks. There's a lot of peaks over here we could scramble up and explore and just everything was running through my mind. It may be worth coming up here with a base camp set up and spending a day or two on this saddle. The big challenge though, especially in the hotter months is water. I really should have brought about twice as much water as I did as well as chug some water before I ever went on the hike. I'm officially making my way down. It's 4.25 in the evening and um, the sun sets around 6.30ish. I'll make sure that bear or whatever that was, wasn't, I don't startle it. Hey bear, 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 hello, I'm coming through. This view is something spectacular. Wow. Part of me wonders why they didn't just put the trail on this ridge right here. I was scouting that in on the topo maps and almost felt like I'd rather go up that ridge. Once you get up there, it's pretty gradual. So I don't know if these are berries. I assume so. That might be why we heard a bear. Bear, berry, bears, berries. Maybe that's why they call them bears. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I always wonder if I can eat this stuff. I, uh, I, I can't resist. Hopefully I don't get sick before I get to the car. <laughs> They're very tart but they are actually pretty tasty. Every once in a while you come by these uh, rock piles like this and they don't seem like they belong. It almost makes me wonder if that's a waste rock pile and they did some exploratory mining. That's not a lot of waste rock, but um, or it could just have been erosion. I don't know. It's probably after five now and I'm starting to feel that clock tick. Got a beautiful view of Huerfano Butte, um, Orphan Butte. John and I went up that, oh, it's been a few months ago now. <laughs> it just looks like a little shrimp down there. I'm way up in the mountains right now. This canyon's getting pretty dark pretty quick. Of, of course I've got sunglasses on too. That probably isn't helping matters. Boy, I just didn't think I'd have to bushwhack coming up this thing. There's a lot of overgrowth. So now it's flatter. Oh, I can really open my stride up and the ground cover has opened up so I can see where I'm stepping, which is quite a little bit of peace of mind here. So I've come down 2000 feet. I have another 2,500 or so more to go down. Um, sometimes it's easier just to measure the hike in elevation versus distance. This is the prickly pear, a little fruit on there, the red berries you see. They taste awesome. They're so good. You can cut them and peel the skin off and eat the inside. Um, but it's really, really seedy. So I think they process it by perhaps boiling it um, and then filtering off the, the juice. And you can buy stuff made with it here and it, it, it's just awesome. It tastes so good. Another thing, I think it's from those, they're called nopales and uh, it's the little cactus leaves. The, of course, the pokers are taken off and they're cut into little strips or you can just buy the whole leaf and then you eat that. Sometimes you can get a pickled or you can saute it. Uh, my girlfriend introduced me to it. <laughs> I was like, hey, it's uh, these things grow in my backyard. Why are we buying them? But she told me it's different, so I don't know. So I do have to thank Paul for these pants. Uh, Paul sent me several pairs of pants to hike in. Um, I grew up with him. He worked with my father, so I've known him ever since I, I was like four or five years old. 
And now he and my father are retired and they do things together. Last spring, he came out and we all went to the Chiricahua Mountains. It was a great time. I hope you come back again, Paul. You're always welcome. We are on the final shoulder. Um, this is pretty flat in this spot. Then we're gonna hit a slope and go down into the last stretch of the trail, a little over a, I don't know, not even a mile once we get off this thing. I am seeing sunsets on the north northwest slope of the Santa Rita Mountains and it's a sight that my camera can barely do justice for. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to pull up, polish off the rest of my water. I got a terrible cotton mouth because I've been talking that whole way down, um, trying to spook off any potential animals. I'm not losing a ton of salt. I notice you, you'll start to see it. These white spots all over the shirt. I don't know if they show up on the camera. I'm passing that spring, the catchment there, where you can fill your water bottle. This is where the horse was. There's still some, uh, some of the bones left. Well, I'm now in deer territory, which probably means I'm in cat territory as well. Pretty sure I spooked up what sounded like a couple deer that were resting here. It's absolutely beautiful out here. It, it floors me every time I do this, especially when I go up in elevation like that. Um, now we're in a completely different ecosystem. The whole environment changes. And when I came through here earlier this afternoon, it was hot, it was pretty hot. And I got up to elevation, it was absolutely beautiful. And now I'm back in here and it's nice and cool because I hit it right at sunset. Well, the uh, thing is, the camera is one thing. It looks so much better in person. It's unreal. So I just got a call for work there. That was kind of cool. I was so worried that my phone wouldn't get service up there, but it did. And I got several calls up there. In a good fashion right there, I completely lost the trail. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna have to get out my headlamp. I'm only like a half mile or a quarter mile from the truck. It's spectacular looking back. We got the moonrise behind us just over the ridge. If I had been up there for that moonrise, whoa, that would have been spectacular. And I'm not far from the truck right now. Right here, I was really wishing that wasn't going home. The sunset was amazing, as well as that moonrise. I would love to go up there and spend more time on that saddle, take a lot of pictures, do some more exploring, and just relax. You know, the rat race in town, it wears you out, especially with everything going on right now, I'll be honest. I'm working really hard to figure out this new market we're in in real estate. And uh, my clients are still doing quite well. If you need to move, and if you wanna come out here, especially adventure like I do, give me a call. I'm actually a real estate broker, and my info is in the description below this video. Oh, this is lovely. People at the research center here have their dogs uh, loose, and uh, I don't wanna get bit. Hello, I'm just a hiker. I hope your dogs are on a leash. Wow, I just can't tell you how beautiful the sunset is. Oh 
Oh my gosh, it says I did 10.3 miles. Kind of crazy how I went all that way yelling about bears. I think I, a bear went by me, potentially at least a deer, a big one. And the thing that scared me the most were the dogs. 